Good morning. Good morning Welcome to this Holy Mass. And this Holy Mass is offered for Paul Angelo Argamosa. And also I welcome Father Michael Connell. He is from Ireland. And the day before yesterday, he had a funeral in Birmingham. And he just came to visit. And it's a great pleasure for all of us. And Father, really, uh, he wished to celebrate Mass today for all of us. And through this Mass, is going to give us his blessings to all of us. And we welcome Father, Father Michael, and thank you so much for accepting and celebrating this Holy Mass and blessing us through this Holy Mass. And Father, uh, Michael worked in South Africa for most of his time, and now he's going to stay in Ireland. So thank you, Father. Thank you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Good morning, everybody. Yes, I have to say that uh, I've been a periodic visitor here for uh, 50 years. Right? So I've seen many people <laughs> come and go and seen many changes and many developments right? um, climaxing in the beautiful church that you have here right now. Right? And I'm very happy indeed to celebrate Mass with you. Let us prepare ourselves for the celebration of the sacred mysteries, for hearing the Holy Word, receiving Holy Communion, 
by acknowledging our sins. <clears throat> I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, graciously keep from us all adversity, so that unhindered in mind and body alike, we may pursue in freedom of heart the things that are yours. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Kings. Elijah the prophet went off to Sidon, 
And when he reached the city gate, there was a widow gathering sticks. Addressing her, he said, Please bring a little water in a vessel for me to drink. She was setting off to bring it when he called after her. Please, he said, bring me a scrap of bread in your hand. As the Lord your God lives, she replied, I have no baked bread, but only a handful of meal in a jar and a little oil in a jug. I'm just gathering a stick or two to go and prepare this for myself and my son to eat, and then we shall die. But Elijah said to her, do not be afraid. Go and do as you have said, but first make a little scone of it for me and bring it to me, and then make some for yourself and for your son. For thus the Lord speaks, the God of Israel. Jar of meal shall not be spent, jug of oil shall not be emptied, and before the day when the Lord sends rain on the face of the earth. The woman went and did as Elijah told her, and they ate the food, she, himself, and her son. The jar of meal was not spent, nor the jug of oil emptied, just as the Lord had foretold through Elijah. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response is, my soul give praise to the Lord. My soul give praise to the Lord. It is the Lord who keeps faith forever, who is just to those who are oppressed. It is he who gives bread to the hungry, the Lord who sets prisoners free. My soul gives thanks to the Lord. It is the Lord who gives sight to the blind, who raises up those who are bowed down. It is the Lord who loves the just, the Lord who protects the stranger. My soul give praise to the Lord. The Lord upholds the widow and orphan, but thwarts the path of the wicked. The Lord will reign forever, Zion's God from age to age. My soul give praise to the Lord. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. It is not as though Christ had entered a man-made sanctuary, which was only modelled on the real one, but it was heaven itself, so that he could appear in the actual presence of God on our behalf. And he does not have to offer himself again and again, like the high priest going into the sanctuary year after year with the blood that is not his own or else he would have had to suffer over and over again since the world began. Instead of that, he has made his appearance once and for all. Now, at the end of the last age, to do away with sin by sacrificing himself. Since men only die once, and after that comes judgment, so Christ too offers himself only once, to take the faults of many on himself. And when he appears a second time, it will will not be to deal with sin, but to reward with salvation those who are waiting for him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel acclamation. to die says the Lord keep faithful and I will give you the crown of life we are mighty God be in your heart and on your lips that you may proclaim his holy gospel worthily and well Father Son and Holy Spirit Amen The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. (laughs) 
In his teaching, Jesus said, Beware of the scribes who like to walk about in long robes, to be greeted obsequiously in the market squares, to take the front seats in the synagogues and the places of honour at banquets. These are the men who swallow the property of widows whilst making a show of lengthy prayers. The more severe will be the sentence that they will receive. He sat down opposite the treasury and watched the people putting money into the treasury and many of the rich put in a great deal. A poor widow came and put in two small coins, the equivalent of a penny. Then he called his disciples and said to them, I tell you solemnly, this poor widow has put more in than all who have contributed to the treasury, for they have all put in money they had over. But she, from the little she had, has put in everything she possessed, all she had to live on. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters, some time ago, a father punished his three-year-old daughter for wasting a roll of gold wrapping paper. Money was tight, and he became infuriated when the child tried to decorate a box to put under the tree. Nevertheless, the little girl brought the gift to her father the next morning and said, This is for your dad. He was embarrassed by his earlier reaction, but he got more upset again when he found that the box was empty. He yelled at her, Don't you know that when you give someone a present, there's supposed to be something inside it. The little girl looked up at him with the tears in her eyes and said, Oh, Dad, it's not empty. I blew kisses into the box, all for your Dad. The father was crushed. He put his arms around his little girl and he begged her forgiveness. He kept the gold box by his bed for years. Whenever he was disgraced, he would take out an imaginary kiss and remember the love of the child who had put it there. This story reminds or reminding us the love and generosity of the little girl to her father. Same way, my dear brothers and sisters, today, the 32nd Sunday of the ordinary time, the church encourages us to learn and appreciate the virtues of generosity and hospitality. As a Christ generously offered himself for our salvation, the church reminds us that we too must be generous to others. One theme common to the readings of this Sunday is generosity and trust in divine providence. In our first reading, Elijah, the prophet of God, tested the widow of Jerephath's generosity and faith. Elijah kept asking for more. However, Despite the widow's poverty, she was generous to him. Fear of the future is one of the greatest enemies of generosity and prosperity. 
Elijah knew how afraid the widow was. Indeed, her fear was genuine. That is, given the circumstances beyond her control at that moment. So Elijah started by addressing and calming her anxiety, saying, Do not be afraid. Then he prophesied to her, For the Lord, the God of Israel, says, The jar of flour shall not go empty, nor the jug of oil run dry. Indeed, this prophecy was fulfilled in the widow's life, and she lacked nothing afterward. Her faith and trust in God's word, and of course, in divine providence, never failed her. Instead, her situation changed and improved beyond her expectations. Her life was transformed from penury to plenty, from misery to luxury, and from poverty to prosperity. The gospel is similar to the first reading. Also, trusting in divine providence for her survival, the widow offered everything she had. She was generous because she knew and trusted the God whom she served. By placing her entire trust and the future in God's hands, she conquered her fear of the future, the instant of self-preservation. There are many lessons for us in today's readings. First, all the figures in our readings were generous. Second, they all trusted in divine providence. They teach or remind us of these simple principles of generosity and prosperity. That is, givers never lack, and blessed is the hand that gives and a hand that receives. My brothers and sisters, in life, moments of scarcity or moments of tests they are moments to trust in divine providence. They are moments of great blessings. So Tobit advises that it is better to give alms than to treasure up gold. Those who perform acts of charity and generosity will have that the fullness of life. Finally, my dear brothers and sisters, as our great provider, God is ready to supply all our needs according to his riches in glory through Christ. He knows our needs and how to meet them. All we need to do is to trust in his divine providence. So let us ask Christ to grant us a very generous heart so that we can sow with the joy because God loves a cheerful and generous giver. So let us ask our Lord, as we have seen in the story, it's not only giving generously or helping, but it's also giving forgiveness, giving mercy, and giving love to others. stand for the creed. I believe in God, the Father, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried, descended into hell, on the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven 
and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Now we have launched a prayer for the success of COP26. Let us recite together, then we will have the big thanks. Loving God, we praise your name with all you have created. You are present in the whole of the universe, we are smallest the creatures. We acknowledge the responsibilities you have placed on us as stewards of your creation. May the Holy Spirit inspire all political leaders at COP26 as they seek to embrace the challenge needed to foster a more sustainable society. Instill in them the courage and the gentleness We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son. Amen. Guided by Christ's words, we come to you, Father, and ask that you hear our prayers. We pray for the church. May we accept our responsibility to do all that is necessary to help the planet. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for world leaders that may, they may all work together through the decisions taken to protect the earth and all who live on it. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for those who are blessed with wealth in this world that they may share with the poor, the hungry, and the homeless. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all those imprisoned throughout the world, that they be dealt with justly, come to know God, and use their time to become better people. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For those who have died recently, especially Maureen Craddock, and Rosalie Mayers, that with joy they may enter their heavenly homeland. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Now let us join our prayers with Mary, with join our prayers with our beloved Mother. Hail Mary, full of, full of grace, grace, the Lord, the Lord is, is with thee. thee. Blessed art thou amongst, amongst women, and, and blessed, blessed is, is the fruit, fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray, pray for, for us sinners, sinners now, now and at the hour of our death. death. Amen. Amen. We make our private petitions in silence to God our Father. Lord, we ask that you hear our prayers and grant us new life and hope through faith in, in your infinite love and generosity. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. God forever. With humble spirit and contrite hearts, may we be accepted by you, O oh Lord. Dear Lord, teach us Jesus. how to share and never be greedy because everything that we have comes from you. Amen. Pray that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. <coughs> Look with favor, we pray, O Lord, upon the sacrificial gifts offered here, that celebrating in mystery the passion of your Son, we may honor it with loving devotion through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God.
For you so loved the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks, as in exultation we acclaim. Holy, holy, O Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mystery of faith. When we eat this, uh, we this resurrection until you come again. <clears throat> Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, our church, spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Bernard, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased me throughout the ages, we may merit to be cohesed to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him. O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, 
Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. With your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. May this mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us. We see. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Body and blood of Christ, keep me safe for everlasting life. Amen.
announcements. <clears throat> Let us pray. Nourished by this sacred gift, O Lord, we give you thanks and beseech your mercy that by pouring forth your spirit, the grace of integrity may endure in those your heavenly power has entered through Christ our Lord. Amen. I request you all, please be seated. Two minutes, please. We have got a few announcements. The first announcement is the raffle tickets are ready and they are available in the porch. I request you all, at least if each family, if, that, uh, if you take maybe one book, it's uh, having 20 tickets. Even if they're not sold, you can bring them back. But if you take each family one book, it's a great help for the church and for the Christmas fair. Thank you. And also today we have got a second collection or the retiring collection for the priests, those who are sick and retired, and their envelopes. And we have got something about the priests, those who are sick and retired. So the formlet is there, the booklet you can take when you go out. So the envelope, and uh, we have got also about the house. Um, thirdly, we thank for the Michael for celebrating this Holy Mass and praying for all of us uh, with a big round of applause, please. I also thank all our angels, those who were on the altar in the sanctuary, all our children, and also thank all the children, those who have participated in the children worship and I thank all the stewards and the beautiful singing today. Really, once again, we enjoyed with all the instruments. And I thank all of you for joining in this Mass. And I wish you all to have a lovely day and good week ahead. Please stand. The Lord be with you. And as I said in the prayer, um, we have worshipped with, with all of creation. And we have articulated the meaning of that worship um, on behalf of creation. And we take away really a blessing to creation as well uh, for during the week. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to glorify the Lord by our lives. Thanks be to God.